Am I the asshole for telling my sister she could have dated the guy she liked had she not been such a misogynistic pick me? My 20 female sister, Kim, and I are identical twins. We are very different growing up and still are. I hate to say it, but Kim is the definition of a pick me girl, always spewing misogynistic nonsense on how women are weak and should abide to men, how she's so short and petite and can't do anything on her own without a big strong man around, how all girls try too hard by wearing makeup while she's pretty naturally, so they all hate her for it. You get the gist. Kim and I attend the same college, but study there in different departments. In one of my classes, there's a guy named Dave. Dave is your typical handsome frat boy most girls in our college have a crush on including kim over the summer i started working at a small coffee shop near campus to earn some extra cash during that time there dave became a frequent customer and pretty friendly towards me since he recognized me from class after a while he admitted he's attracted to me and asked me out so we can get to know each other knowing that kim liked him i decided to reject dave part two am i the asshole for telling my sister she could have dated the guy she liked had she not been such a misogynistic pick me and instead offered to set him up with her we are identical so if he asked based on attraction it really shouldn't matter dave agreed and i gave him a sister's number i knew they met up for a date this weekend but i didn't have time to ask him how it went since i was sick today during my shift dave approached me and asked if he could return kim's lip gloss she left in his car since he knew the brand was expensive i asked him why he didn't return it to her himself and he said he didn't want to see her after how the date went i was confused so i asked him if the date was really that bad he explained that when they went to the nice restaurant where my sister didn't stop harassing and criticizing the waitress for wearing too much makeup and looking easy after that fiasco was over she proceeded to say some stuff that i can only imagine were usually said on an andrew tate podcast dave who apparently was raised by a single mom and has five sisters was horrified so he excused himself to the bathroom paid for their meal venmoed kim some cash for an uber and left the restaurant i was embarrassed for kim but totally understood why dave walked out on her so i apologized on her behalf and took the lip gloss with me i returned the lip gloss to her two hours ago and she didn't i returned it to her two hours ago and she didn't stop complaining on how awful dave was how he wasn't a real man since real men usually like when she brings up how inferior women are to them at some point, I just cut her off and told her that she had a chance of a nice date with the guy she liked, but she ruined it all because she couldn't stop being such a misogynistic pick me even for one second i'm now back in my apartment and kim hasn't stopped texting me demanding i apologize but i don't feel like it update i don't agree or excuse kim's actions i do understand they come from a place of insecurity and although i knew her obsession over male validation was not normal i didn't understand the severity of it until now i talked with our parents and they both agreed that based on what i told them we try to get kim to attend therapy after the holidays i'm not sure she'll agree but it's still worth the shot i ended up getting dave's phone number from a classmate of ours and i sent him a text apologizing we have a lunch date next week losing feelings waiting for him to come back. My husband and I decided six months ago that he would not take a job in a different city, but less than a week after that, he informed me he was taking it. That meant he would be working in another city four and a half hours away in a different state, five days a week, while I worked full time and would be responsible for taking care of our six month old and two year old by myself during the week. For context, we talked over and over before we got married about how I wanted a partner who would be 50-50 with me if we had kids. So, not only did he disregard our joint conversation, he was also going back on our vows and abandoning me with two young children. That's how I see it. Anyway, I went into survival mode. I have lost a noticeable amount of weight due to stress and I even had suicidal thoughts for a bit because my world crumbled when he left. Everything I thought I knew was changing and I didn't know how to handle anything. Fast forward 6 months to now, I'm no longer feeling depressed or in complete survival mode. I finally felt comfortable asking my parents for help. They retired and moved down to my city to be closer to the grandkids, but they raised me to not rely on them, so it's been hard to ask instead of waiting for them to volunteer. Yes, more therapy I know. And I've been able to take a few work trips and one personal trip to clear my head and gather my thoughts and actually have time to think things through. Unfortunately, I'm thinking I'm moving on from my husband. I gave him until March 2021 to find a realistic way to get back to our city full time. But now I feel like I'm in a holding pattern and can't move forward because I'm waiting on yet another decision from him. And I can feel me losing love and attachment to him over time. I don't think I'll want to be his wife by next March and I don't know what to do about that. I'm so tired by the end of the week and have work I need to catch up on due to focusing on my girls during the week that when my husband is here on weekends, I use that time for him to bond with the kids and I work. I'm so tired that I am in bed by 8.30 while he likes to stay up late. Then I'm up early with the girls while he sleeps. My oldest has been sleeping in bed with me ever since her daddy left. Even when we get her to fall asleep in her own bed, she wakes up crying and comes to find me. So my husband and I don't even sleep together when he is home. I don't know if my feelings will last for him through next year, and I'm scared what that means for me and my family. Ah, couple therapy, couple therapy, couple therapy. My aunt went to her ex-boyfriend's wedding. My youngest aunt from my mom's side is a disappointment from the family. Like, even my parents tell me not to become like her. My maternal grandmother hates her, but she's the kind of woman I want to be when I grow up. My aunt is in her mid-30s now. She has a lot of tattoos and piercings, dyed hair, and played the drums. She is a bartender in a pub, and she loves her job. But the reason no one talks about 
about her in the family is because she's lesbian and she lives with her lover. So last year after a bad mental breakdown, I begged my dad to take me to her place. I had dropped out of my final examination and I was in pretty bad condition. That's when she told me the story. So before she was dating her now girlfriend, she was dating this guy who she dreamt of spending her whole life with only to find out he slept with his coworker. After a year of their breakup, the homeworker comes to my aunt and gives her a wedding invitation and rubbing it into her face that she was pregnant. Well, the catch is, my aunt said gleefully that her ex was infertile. Him and my aunt had been trying to have the baby to no avail and hence they went to a doctor. And the test results were sent to her. So her ex didn't know he was infertile. She said she didn't tell him out of spite, but boy did it play out good for her. Her ex was Christian, so they did not have a typical Hindu wedding but the ones they show in English movies. My aunt talked to her ex's brother and convinced him to play a part in her revenge. The brother was up for it apparently. So at the reception, there are this walk down the memory lane kind of event where they show pictures of the couple. So after a few cute pictures, a picture of the homewrecker with another man kissing pops up. And then another and another and as the bride was in a frenzy, the test result shows up on the screen and the slide stops. A written note saying that the groom was infertile. And boy, the aunties at the party were all in for the drama as the groom looked utterly humiliated and the bride was in tears. This is what you get for messing with the woman's true feelings. Man, I love my aunt. She's a badass. Am I the asshole for liquidating my daughter's college fund to keep our dream house? I, 50 female, lost my husband four years ago. I also have a 16 year old daughter. My late husband left me everything and told me to trust his lawyer. My husband worked for 20 years as a doctor, so I inherited over seven figures. A year later, I decided to list our home of 12 years and received an offer too good to refuse. I decided to move my daughter and I to Malibu because we always dreamed of a house next to the beach. But my husband was exceptionally tight-fisted and called homes their money pits. We found a beautiful home, but I never personally handed anything regarding buying a home before, so I didn't anticipate all the extra costs. Am I the asshole for liquidating my daughter's college fund to keep our dream house? My daughter was so excited, so I decided to go for it. My late husband's lawyer was furious at my decision, so I decided to stop taking his calls. I ended up signing with a money manager who said we'd be passively earning 90% of what surgeons earn per year. But he ended up tanking a lot of our investments. I then made my own investments, which just made it worse, and now we only have $35,000 available, not to mention our debt. Basically, I'm out of luck until my business gets clients. My husband did start a college fund for our daughter and that would keep us afloat for many more months. So I liquidated it and now she's furious. Am I the asshole for asking my brother to pay $3,000 for my engagement ring? I decided to host a family dinner over the weekend and my brother brought my nephews 4 and 8 over as well. I used to wear my engagement ring all the time but lately I keep it in my walk-in closet and wear it for special occasions. While I was cleaning the dinner table, my nephews went to go play while the adults were still in the outdoor patio area. Mind you, my brother was not supervising his kids. So during this time, my nephews went into the master bedroom with no one knowing and started playing with everything, including my engagement ring. When we eventually came to look for them, they panicked because they knew they weren't supposed to be upstairs, so they ran into the master bathroom and flushed my ring. Am I the asshole for asking my brother to pay $3,000 for my engagement ring? You heard me right, my brother's kids flushed my engagement ring. We called a plumber in case it was somehow in the U-trap of the toilet and not actually gone, but nope. Unfortunately, it was gone for good. We still had the original receipt, so I called my brother and emailed him a scanned copy as proof of the cost. I asked him to reimburse me for the ring my nephew flushed, and immediately he started calling me an a-hole because we're family and he was just a child. So he's refused to repay the cost of my ring and I told him I'll be taking him to court for this and now my entire family is blowing up my phone. Am I wrong? Am I the asshole for my husband missing his daughter's prom? I, 36 female, have been married to my husband Josh 40 for 10 years. We have a 9-year-old daughter Lauren together and my stepdaughter Riley is 18. About a year ago, I booked a vacation with my girlfriends for one of their bachelorette parties. It's in Tennessee and we would leave Thursday and come back Monday. Well, this weekend, Lauren has a cheerleading competition that Josh is taking her to. She's required to have a guardian there the whole time and needs to arrive early Friday and leave Sunday. And if she's not there for check-in in time, she can't compete that weekend. The issue is Riley's prom is on Friday. Am I the asshole for my husband missing his daughter's prom? Riley did not have a junior prom and her school only has a senior prom. We found out the date of prom after school had started and the trip had already been booked and paid for. 
My husband is now going to miss Riley's prom to take Lauren to her competition. Riley finds this extremely unfair and thinks we're playing favorites and she'll never get this chance again and she wants pictures with her dad and sister. But Lauren doesn't want to miss her competition and risk her spot on the team. So my husband asked if I canceled my trip and I told him no. It's been booked, paid for, and I need a break. He takes breaks and trips as well. Am I wrong?